Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. My name is Maddie and in today's video I will talk to you about two new Japanese books in translation that are being released today to the North American public. The past few years have been a dream come true for English-speaking fans of Japanese literature. There have been so many wonderful um, Japanese books that have been translated into English across the English-speaking world. And today marks another very important day for Japanese literature in translation. So without further ado, happy publication day and welcome to the English-speaking world to The Whole by Hiroko Oyamada and Earthlings by Sayaka Murata. For transparency purposes, I would like to say up front that I did receive digital advanced readers copies of these books. I obtained them via NetGalley and I am very grateful both to NetGalley and the respective publishers for providing me with the opportunity to read these books for free before their publication date in exchange for my honest review. This video, however, has not been requested by either NetGalley or the publishers. It is my personal choice to make this video mainly because I loved both of these books, but also because I like to think that posting and sharing about these Japanese books in translation play a part in bringing more Japanese books in translation. And since I'm such a big fan, I would love to be a part of that. So now let us go into the book discussions. The first book that I will delve in today is The Hole by Hiroko Yamada. This book was originally published in Japanese in 2014 under its original Japanese title, Ana. It is translated by David Boyd and it is published by New Directions Publishing. Upon its publication in Japan, it received the very prestigious award, the Agutagawa Prize, which is awarded for the best published literary story written by a rising author. It is Hiroko Oyamada's second book to be translated into English. The first book is The Factory that was also published at New Directions Publishing, I believe in 2019. The plot follows a young woman who moves from the city to the countryside um, because her husband changes jobs. To move there, she quits her temp job and she becomes a housewife and despite it being the most practical rational decision for them as a married couple at the time um, she quickly becomes very bored with her new lifestyle and she starts to feel very alienated from her husband and also from the society as she is at home every day by herself she starts experiencing a lot of feelings of loneliness and just overall starts questioning her purpose in life now that she doesn't feel she is contributing to society according to society's expectations of her. This is basically the first half of the story, which also, despite being very rooted in reality, um, has this very ominous tone to it that kind of sets the story for something much darker to happen in the second half of the novel. However, in the second half, um, things take a much more surreal turn one day when um, our main character is home alone she's asked to run an errand for her mother-in-law who now lives very close to her in the countryside and while she is on her errand she sees a very strange animal that she has never seen before and she starts following it into the field and falls into a hole what is very strange about this hole is that it seems to fit her body in perfectly almost like if it was made for her specifically. And after this event, all her experiences and encounters take a very surreal turn and she questions her own sanity a lot and she starts more and more to question how useful she actually is for society. As these strange encounters start taking place and magical realism elements start um, tangling in with the daily life of our character, um, us as readers start wondering what actually is happening and what is real and what is not. The atmosphere of the book is crafted very well by mixing descriptions of the sweltering summer heat and the buzzing of the cicadas that is unnerving as well as these feeling of claustrophobia that the character is experiencing by being so close to her in-laws that up to this point were not a real big part of her life, as well as just being in this small village. I really enjoy this novel, or maybe I should say novella because it's very short. If you watched my previous video 
which was a reading vlog video, you would have seen me read this book and say that I was still trying to process the second half of the book because, like I said earlier, the tone of the first half made me expect more of a horror story than what actually happened in the second half of the book, which was just more sinking into this young woman's um, desperation of not really being considered a productive member of society, which was very interesting. And the more that I think about the book, the more it rolls on me and the more I appreciate it. I do look forward to reading more by Hiroko Yamada. I do own her English debut, The Factory, so I'm looking forward to picking that one up really soon. And I'm really grateful for having had the chance to read this and I do recommend it. So if you like what you heard, definitely pick it up. It is available today. The second book coming out today is probably the biggest release of Japanese fiction in translation this year, and that is Earthlings by Sayaka Murata. It is translated by Ginny Tapley Takamori, and it is Sayaka Murata's second novel to be translated into English. The first novel that she had translated into English came out in 2018, and it is Convenience Store Woman. It was a huge hit when it came out in 2018, and it quickly became a worldwide sensation. It's been translated in multiple languages and I believe that a lot of people in and outside of Japan related a lot to it because it questioned a lot the way that society works and the rules that people need to follow to fit in society and the question of why do we actually need to follow these rules to fit in society. Earthlings kind of picks up on where convenience store women left even though it is not related at all, but those ideas persist in Earthlings as well. Earthlings came out in Japan in 2018. An English translation is published by Globe Atlantic in the US and by Granta in the UK. The book follows a young girl from about the age of 11 all the way to her adulthood when she is around her mid-30s. And from a very early age, this young girl called Natsuki doesn't really quite fit in. Um, she does try to a lot and she tries to mimic a lot of the social skills of the people around her to fit in and not make herself stand out. But she doesn't quite understand what motivates people to be the way they are, what motivates them to be social creatures, what motivates them to actually want to work and be these tools in society and what motivates them to want to have kids and basically just reproduce for society's sake. She also feels very alienated from her family and one of the reasons is just her having different views but the other reason is that she is also facing a lot of abuse mainly from her mother. Her only solace in this world is that every summer she spends the Obon holidays with all of her extended family and in that extended family she has a cousin of the same age as her called Yu who shares her feelings of alienation and together they come up with this idea that they think they are aliens and not really earthlings and they come from a different planet and this is the reason why they can't understand and they can't feel the same way that humans feel. The novel very quickly and early on takes a very dark turn and there is absolutely no taboos in this book and there are very explicit depictions of everything, including child abuse, physical, um, verbal, as well as sexual. And just these instances made the first half of this book pretty much one of the hardest books that I've read in a long time. Um, it made me feel very helpless as I was reading it. Um, it obtained this kind of visceral reaction out of me that I don't really recall having had since I read The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum. The way that these abuse scenes are described are not in a way that makes the view seem sensationalized. It is described in such a matter-of-fact way that just makes the reader kind of comprehend that for a lot of children out there, this is just their everyday reality. And that made me as a reader feel very helpless and feel very emotionally affected. At the same time, um, when you read these 
instances of abuse, you read them through Natsuki's perspective and her descriptions of how she's internalizing this abuse and how she is actually questioning whether it really is abuse in the first place or it's just something that just happens and she's being overreacting is even more heartbreaking than the actual abuse taking place. Ultimately, the book is a sharp critique of just the rules and laws of society and the treatment that society gives to people that choose not to adhere to these values and these rules. The other day I watched an interview with Sayaka Murata over at a, I believe it's a, a festival in the UK, it was a virtual literature festival online, and I heard her speak about her process of creating this novel and her other novels, and I have to admit I had never heard her speak before in any interviews, but she felt like such a profound person. It felt like such a beautiful experience listening to her talk. She's already a very acclaimed author in Japan and she's won numerous awards in Japan. And she also talked during her interview how her work is sometimes perceived differently in Japan than in the West. Um, and people like it for different reasons. And I thought that was fascinating. I really, really hope that a lot of more of her books come out in translation. As I was scrolling through Goodreads reviews for Earthlings, I saw someone say that if this book was a movie, it would become an instant cult classic. And I absolutely agree with that. I actually thought that it felt like I was watching a Sion Sono movie. Um, for those of you who do not know, um, Sion Sono's this very subversive kind of edgy filmmaker portrays things so openly and so explicitly that it makes the viewer feel very uncomfortable. Some of his movies, in case you don't know, are Suicide Circle and Noriko's Dinner Table and Cold Fish. Those are the three that pop to mind. Even if it never gets adapted into a movie, this book is phenomenal and I highly, highly recommend reading Earthlings and picking it up as soon as possible. This is all that I have to share with you today. Again, I feel really happy that I was able to read these books. And more than that, I am just happy that these books have been brought to someone's attention to receive the translation treatment and be made accessible to the English-speaking readers out there. As a side note, there is so much to unpack in Earthlings and I am so happy that it is the book of the month of a Japanese literature book club that is organized over on Instagram. For those of you who are on Instagram and that are planning to read Earthlings, um, I think you would definitely enjoy being a part of this group. Again, I am not affiliated with the people that have created this book club. I have participated in one of their discussions and it was just interesting to be a part of it. And I think a lot of other people would enjoy it as well. So I'm going to leave the information for that book club down below for anyone interested in joining over at Instagram. This is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in a new video. Bye!